Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you had a uh, good lunch. Uh, so today, what I want to talk to you about is the uh, progression of Beautify through our version 2, our upgrade to Material Design 2, uh, the progress that we've made over the year iterating on that, and uh, some, a surprise at the end showing uh, some of our composition API for View 3 and a demo. So let's hope that it goes good. So um, if you don't know who I am, my name is John Leader. Um, I'm the author of Beautify, and I've been working on it since uh, June of 2016. Uh, I've been full-time since October 2017, and right now, uh, Beautify is my full-time job. And uh, so what is Beautify? Uh, often when I describe it, yes, it's a UI library built on Vue from uh, material design, but I often describe Vue as kind of like the boiler, uh, excuse me, the um, a blueprint, like you're building a house, it's the walls, and Beautify is kind of the decor, it's the, the art on the wall, the, the paint on the walls, and uh, it's just to help make your application look good without having to be a designer. And uh, so when version 2 came out, it released in July, it was uh, a big step for the team. Uh, version 1.5, if you've used it, you know, it was sufficient, but um, not a high quality product, it had lots of room for improvement. And uh, the unfortunate thing was when we released uh, version uh, 1.0, uh, Google uh, released Material Design 2, and we were just not ready to upgrade. So we had a long time to get back to that point, which we did this year, I'm very happy about, and uh, got some really cool things. If you haven't been up or working with Beautify, uh, we have some really cool new features that have uh, come in lately that I think is going to, uh, hopefully, for some of the people that had uh, maybe concerns like with styling or configuration, uh, hopefully we can squash that and we can maybe get you back into the framework. So the good parts of what we did for 2.0, uh, 1.5 was terrible for accessibility. Um, it had uh, you know, decent RTL support, uh, but other than that, um, from a, a polished perspective for a, a large enterprise business, there was not a lot of features that they could say, I can't use that. So it was a big focus for us to, to make sure that uh, we were accommodating for accessibility. Um, Section 508, which is, um, I'm pretty sure it's just pertaining to United States uh, for military. Uh, but we also now have full RTL support with over 32 languages, so that includes um, you know, right to left languages, Arabic. And um, we also have some very massive uh, performance increasements. Uh, if you've ever used any of our inputs in 1.5, uh, if you started to have uh, many, many on the page, you might notice a slowdown. And uh, luckily, some of our uh, smart team members were able to figure out a way to stop uh, components re-rendering, and as of 2.1, we have massive performance improvements when you're using with inputs. Uh, we've completely revamped the, uh, the process for styling an application. All the tools already existed, but we didn't do a really good job of creating a cohesive process for developers to use. So it required a little bit more from the developer to achieve what they wanted. So that was something that I set out for with uh, version 2.2 that released in December, and uh, I'm gonna go over a couple of the things that we did with that uh, later on. We also introduced a bunch of new components, uh, which is kind of tricky, right? As a, uh, as a UI framework, no matter what, you're always gonna grow horizontally. So uh, it doesn't matter how good you are, how efficient you are. So when we put new components in, we try to make sure that they uh, target a particular uh, part of an application that is lacking. Uh, maybe something that users are missing that I often ask people, when you work with Beautify, uh, what do you grab for that's not there? And these are the kind of things that we try to mold into uh, our future implementations for components. And also uh, with uh, version 2.2, we introduced uh, new directives uh, that, in, uh, that integrate with the JavaScript uh, observer APIs, and I'll go over that in just a minute. So with accessibility, it's kind of a tricky problem. With, with Beautify, we try to give you a good baseline. And with that baseline, we also want you to be able to customize. So we say, hey, here's our component. If you don't like it, here are the tools that we use to build it, and you can build your own. But one of the challenges with accessibility is getting that information down to the component. We don't know if the user's gonna use a button, or they're gonna use an icon, or whatever they're gonna use to, for example, in this instance, trigger the menu. And we had to be able to pass that information down and in a lot of cases automatically generate it for the user. If you've ever worked with a select, for example, uh, a custom one, you, you might know how difficult it is to uh, create correlation between uh, the information that exists in the input and the menu that shows for the user, which is a very large complication for accessibility for uh, NVDA 
um, and uh, other uh, situations. Um, so what we did is we passed the information down to the user and you just bind it, just like you would with anything else. It's uh, something that's very familiar that you would use with Vue anyways. And what that allows us to do is because of the uh, reactivity of the scope slots, uh, we're able to dynamically change. Um, for example, uh, when the menu's open, then the button will update, it's area expanded, has pop-up, et cetera. Um, and as with anything in development, it's an ongoing process, but the really cool thing was this year we were able to meet up with a developer, um, and I may pronounce his name incorrectly, but Fighter, and he uh, works at a company that uh, accessibility is very, very huge, and I, I teamed up with him, we got him the, contrib uh, the contributors, and uh, he's a dedicated accessibility guy. So. Um, we're always constantly making improvements, and you know, with the framework, one of the big things that we saw is outside of Bootstrap or uh, frameworks that just use the baseline HTML, because you're going to have guaranteed accessibility that way regardless, not a lot of people fully encompass uh, all the aspects of accessibility, so it's something that we're uh, definitely continually improving. And then we've also started uh, providing more information on specific components. So for example, if you have a, a banner, which is a new component in Material Design 2, and uh, you want to uh, get some information about how its accessibility is actually configured, well now we have that in the documentation and we explain this is what we use, this is why we use it, and here's the information regarding it. So uh, hopefully to em empower developers to not only um, use these uh, important features, but also understand um, why they're there and the, the purpose. So internationalization, now we've, we've always kind of had this, but we've continued to expand. I believe we're over 30 languages right now, and this is for the uh, default components within Beautify. And uh, with uh, version two, we made it really easy to be able to uh, do things like dynamically change um, uh, your language on the fly and be able to have all of your components and all of your stuff just automatically update. Um, also integrating with like Vue i18n, which uh, hopefully if you're working with internationalization you use, it's a great piece of software. Uh, but we integrate with that and also if there was ever any other type of plugin like that, uh, we integrate with that because we open up our API so that you can pretty much use whatever you want or you can just use what we provide. Another thing, and this kind of uh, goes into um, RTL is the bi-directionality. So in Beautify, you can actually configure it at a global level on the fly, but you can also configure it at a, a component level. Interesting thing is I uh, spoke with someone yesterday who actually needed to use that particular feature because they had built an application uh, for the Quran. And it was very, I was very excited to see how that actually worked out. And um, again, so you can actually configure down to a base level, giving you a little bit more control because uh, not everyone's application is the same and, and maybe you want to display something particular for that process, and now you have the ability to. Uh, keep in mind this is pertaining to version two. It's different and I'll show you in version three in a little bit. But uh, one of the big things that we really wanted to do with version uh, two was get full TypeScript support. And uh, thanks to uh, uh, Kale and uh, Yasik and, and Albert um, and working with the, uh, the Vue team, uh, we were able to come up with a way to uh, provide uh, the best possible uh, typing that we could with the way that Vue is now. Um, and what this allowed us to do is because even though uh, we utilize an extend model, um, everything was always built compositionally. Everything stacked, text field select, autocomplete. So the process existed uh, as far as uh, implementation uh, was just different in version two. But we were able to get the entire framework updated to TypeScript. Uh, we added uh, new features and functionality as far as integrations in Vetter, uh, uh, integrations in uh, PHP, not, um, excuse me, uh, the JetBrains products uh, for their um, browsers and IDEs. And we're continually working to improve uh, the developer experience, we had, uh, if anyone remembers our VS Code plugin uh, that we used to have, um, we're actually bringing that back. We have a new champion for it. So again, always trying to work on some new tools to um, provide developers more information so that they can develop more efficiently. So one of the biggest problems that I hear from everyone is, you know, it's great, material design, but what can we do to style it? So. Like I said before, we kind of already had these processes in place, but they weren't super refined. And because they weren't super refined, they weren't very well documented because we weren't really comfortable where they at. We knew we needed the functionality, but we were still kind of iterating on it. 
So um, in comes uh, Vue CLI 3, which is amazing, which is the, the big differentiator in Vue uh, to me. And we were able to create a plugin that can hook in and do some really awesome dynamic things. For example, when you use the Vuetify CLI plugin, uh, it will allow you to easily and dynamically create variable files, modify our underlying um, styling, and it will automatically persist in your application. You don't have to do anything. You just create a file and it works. Um, so it's really easy to opt in at any point in time. We added thousands of SAS variables in our last version, probably, maybe more. And uh, the only downside, though, is the initial compilation time. Because Vuetify transpiles the dependencies and node modules, uh, this allows us to, one, have better tree shaking for our styles, but it does come at the cost of a little bit of um, initial uh, compilation time, which we are working on right now. And we're gonna, um, we have a couple ways to uh, get around it, but we're going to have a more solid solution in version 3. And again, all right, that's really cool, John, but my designer still hates material design. Okay. Well, <laughs> Google heard this too, and they said, okay, so what can we do? We have these really good design principles. What can we do to apply them in different scenarios? So enter material studies. And what material studies was for Google is say, okay, we have this baseline. What can we change to maintain the principles that we spent all this money to develop, um, but also give people the identity of, hey, this does not look like a material application at all. And with the power of UCLI and a little bit of Vuetify magic, um, basically, we utilize the SAS variables that we provide. We utilize the configuration of uh, Vuetify when you instantiate a new instance to start your application. And we create this process that allows you to essentially, if you're a user developing, it's very simple. You work with two files, and we have a process. But you can also uh, share them. You can create anything that you want. An example right here, this is one of the material studies, uh, Basil, and there's seven in total. And essentially what they do is, okay, maybe uh, everything's a tile or, or they use a different font. Um, sometimes they have maybe a particular component looks a little different. But it is, a, it is an interesting way to introduce people into, hey, this is material design, but it doesn't have to be as such. And um, it also kind of sets a foundation for future features um, because in, we're eventually going to allow people to configure pretty much everything in the framework um, before uh, as far as like uh, components, props, and stuff like that. We're working on ways um, on the actual process. But again, continually uh, expanding on the customization that's available in Beautify. Um, some other quality of life changes that we made. So if anyone, uh, has anyone worked with the uh, Intersection Observer API? Extremely powerful. Uh, and it's also, you could polyfill it. And, and what this allows us to do is, uh, you know, with the, such an extreme focus on performance and SEO optimization, Lighthouse scores, you hear that all the time, uh, we need to come up with new ways to be able to uh, lazily load content and uh, uh, not render things above the fold or below the fold that are not required. Now, if anyone's following, you know that uh, Image just got um, um, an update. It's coming soon where it's like built-in lazy loading. Uh, but what we're able to do a little bit differently is with the Intersect, we can apply this to multiple things. Uh, so uh, we give you an interface of a directive. You can bind it to any element. And if you don't know what Intersection Observer does, it allows you to know when an element is visible on the screen which is very important for things like lazy loading images or lazy loading content. Um, so when we created this, it allowed us to do things like uh, deferred loading for image automatically. It just works out of the box. You don't have to do anything. Um, it allows us to think about new ways that we can design components. Uh, for example, if you've ever worked with maybe a, a table of contents and uh, you scroll down and the, uh, the highlighted item changes, this directive kind of enables functionality like that. And then it also, um, one of the things that we did, if you worked in 1.5 and you used uh, what we call detachables, uh, this dialog menu uh, tooltip, these are um, uh, components where their content, whenever it's rendered, will detach uh, to the root of your application and then display. Uh, but what we did is in version 2, we realized most people don't need them right away. So we made everything lazy by default. And this drastically increased the, or decreased the, um, the start time of people's applications because it wasn't have to render all this content. And you can still make it eager, for example, if you have um, a particular implementation where you want something to show for SEO. 
you can make it eager, but default out of the box, we're trying to give users the best performance possible for their application. And again, better SEO, we've got smaller bundles and improved performance with the latest version. Uh, one of the things that we introduced with uh, 1.5, and I'm actually very proud of because I don't think very many uh, open source projects are able to do this, but uh, we offer long-term support. And, and what that means is for it, um, starting, well, it's in version 1.5 until July, uh, but once we release version 3, uh, we'll probably iterate one more minor on uh, the 2.0 branch, and then that will be long-term support for 18 months. So security, uh, vulnerabilities, critical bugs, um, there will be uh, security reports, information out uh, regarding, hey, this is what happened, and it gets fixed immediately, period. And um, we also work uh, very extensively um, with trying to backport fixes. Uh, so a lot of times the, the code base changes in the newer version and it's really hard to do that. So we often work with community members that are still using those versions to try to backport them and get them in pull requests. And then we, we, we take this all together and we say, okay, hey, how can we get people to easily upgrade so that we can get them to the latest version so that we can make sure we have good support and we've been working on you know, improving those guides. And then, again, we also have lots of help channels. If you've ever been um, in our Discord server, which is uh, community.beautifyjs.com, I implore you to come join. We have an extremely active community with a lot of very passionate developers that are very eager to help people work through Beautify, become better developers, solve problems, share the awesome things that we make, and uh, it's just a really great experience, and I definitely uh, would like everyone to please join and uh, um, check it out. But overall, the point of long-term support is to get peace of mind. You have to go to your leadership and you have to say, hey, we want to use this software, and he says, well, is it guaranteed? And this kind of gives um, you know, developers and business say, okay, hey, I know this is going to be covered, so I feel confident in being able to start a project in it. Now, one of the things, and I'm going to try to hurry up here, um, one of the things that I focused on very extensively this year, if anyone remembered Vue's transition to version 2, uh, the team kind of focused on tooling. They had a very good baseline, and they said, okay, we can move on and start creating tooling to help increase our ecosystem. And that's kind of where we are right now. And the idea is we want to create this um, collaborative uh, ecosystem of plugins that enables developers to not only be more efficient and, and develop better, but to um, implement uh, good practices and procedures. You know, who writes unit tests or who wants to write unit tests, right? It's very difficult. So trying to come up with a way to integrate that into the development process without increasing time has been my big focus for this year. Another thing that's really interested, uh, interesting, so uh, progressive images uh, with, um, whenever you compile uh, your application with uh, Beautify, you can enable um, automatic uh, uh, progressive images. If you've ever been to like Medium, you open the page and it's blurry and it fades in. Um, really helps with performance and this just works. You don't have to do anything. Uh, and, and we also have one of the greatest features, I believe, is as I uh, explained earlier, We'll always grow horizontally. There's nothing we can do. So we have to be able to get rid of what you don't use. This example right here is, um, I think I'm using like six or seven uh, components. But the biggest thing I want to emphasize on is when we worked with um, developers, and we work with a lot of companies to make sure that we're meeting those needs, um, most people didn't even use 50% of the framework. So they, they saw these really massive bundle size decreases, and it just works. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you install Beautify, you compile, and it's done. Also, uh, CLI presets. Has anyone ever heard of those? You might have saw it at the end of your, uh, your creation of a new view application where it asks you, would you like to save this for the future? But there's also a variant of online where you can have an online preset that can designate the same concepts, but uh, you can add additional things like prompts and generators. And what I've broken everything up into is whenever I talk with the developers, I always say, I, I don't know how to structure things. I don't know what it's supposed to look like, and I spend more time doing that. And I see so many people make uh, very small uh, mistakes in regards to you know, not using things like ESLint or they don't know how to install it. And it just really decreases um, how efficient you are in your development. So um, we have three presets that are, gonna, that are coming out. The one is out right now and you'll be able to install it here in just a minute. Uh, but the idea is get the user started. Um, did anyone ever use Vue CLI 2? <laughs> the monolithic uh, GitHub repository that was impossible to maintain. 
the one aspect that I enjoyed about that was I kind of felt like I had an application already there. Even though creating a new Vue CLI application is still very complete, uh, there are still a lot of things that are um, left up to user land to configure. So uh, just like we trust the Vue team to create the most efficient process when we create Vue CLI applications, it's our duty to do the same. And what we do here is, um, so we start out with a base preset that creates your basic app, installs things like our ESLint config and plugin, um, and uh, also the Vueify plugin. And this is just a basic app to get you going. Then you move to the next step. Okay, well maybe you want to do a bigger application. Well, uh, we have Vueify CLI, which is going to be a scaffolding um, um, CLI that integrates with Vue CLI to where you can create components, views, you can designate the way things look. And instead of spending time, okay, well, how is this structured? What does this look like? You just create it and it works. And the great thing is, because Vue CLI, you can actually check and see if other um, plugins exist, we can hook in and do some really interesting things. For example, with the CLI, we can detect if you have unit tests. And if you have unit tests, when you create a new component, we just generate a unit test for you. Same thing with Storybook. We detect that you're using the Storybook plugin, the Vuetify Storybook plugin, with Vuetify CLI, we just generate a Storybook entry for you. They're very basic, but it gets your foot in the door to be able to actually have something in place, so maybe you can't do a unit test now or the Storybook now, but it's there. And when you're able to get to it, you don't have to think about it. And it, it, it shouldn't increase your time, and that's what we're kind of going for. A, a, a few CLI2 on steroids is kind of what I say. We want to improve productivity, reduce cognitive load, and really just help developers become better and be able to create some amazing applications. So I know I'm running out of time, but I said yesterday we're going to talk a little bit about 3.0. Uh, the team uh, was able to get together over the course of January after the alpha was released for Vue uh, 3 and just start iterating. And we finally have a good, cohesive path forward uh, to be able to determine what that's going to look like. Now, we had some goals. First of all, we have to rebuild in the Composition API. Well, we're already using render functions, so that's pretty easy. Uh, we want to replace mixins with effects. And if you've ever, again, used Vue to find detail, you know how much I love mixins. Um, I'm probably the reason why Evan's getting rid of them. <laughs> I'm serious. We wanted to improve the component structure. I, am, I like things to be linear. I like to understand what something needs to do and what it looks like, put it on paper, and never think about it again. So, and this is also a process that helps with contributing. And then we also, again, wanted to improve the development process, not only for us, but um, with as, as expansive as Vutify has become, it is absolutely impossible to, to maintain anything by myself. So having a defined process allows us to bring in more users to help contribute because we don't have to answer so many questions. It's already taken care of. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've reduced the complexity. So if you've poked around with the Vue 3 Composition API, uh, this is probably not too new to you. Um, but again, we wanted to establish a solid coding guideline for what this looked like. We wanted to identify the primary roles of features. We want to have the functionality scoped very tightly and not make something very uh, so verbose. Uh, vSelect is a great example. It's a trap component. There's tons of features you can add that makes it extremely good, but it doesn't fit for everyone. So we want to make sure that we have a really defined purpose for a component. And if any features or functionalities that are you know, not useful there or duplicated, we pull them out. And again, we just want to improve the contributor experience, make it easier for us to maintain, and give more opportunities uh, for Vutify to grow. Mix in madness, again, so for us, it reduced the duplicated code, it made testing easier, and it really fit our extension model. But again, the problem was it obfuscate where the functionality came from. Um, you had a high impact or a high chance for uh, name collisions, and then again, it's very confusing for contributors. You don't know where information's coming from. Again, it makes the code hard to reason about. So introducing effects, uh, which the name may change. I think the core team, the Vue core team didn't like the name, so we'll see. Uh, but it uses the Vue 3 composition API. Um, and what we've done is it, it's essentially just moving over the code. Uh, in a lot of cases, everything just transfers over, especially since we use render functions. But what this allows us to do now is not only in, improve our TypeScript, which is one of the big benefits of uh, Vue 3, but it also allows us to get rid of all the obfuscation. 
Um, and it allows us to be able to have users understand where information is coming from and be more efficient whenever they're contributing. So yes, release. Well, that wasn't supposed to come right away. So this is heavily dependent on when view releases. We are working directly in tandem, and the goal is day one to release uh, with view three. Um, and again, that's going to depend upon their release cycle and what's going on. But the great thing about this is if you've ever heard of Notion, it's an amazing application, you can go right now to notion.beautifiedjs.com and you can see the entire version 3 plan down to the component, coding guidelines, everything. And uh, we're trying to get as many people on there to help us create this designated path for how things get developed so that there's a, uh, a cohesive path forward for getting more help for development. And then we'll do a really quick live demo if you'd like to follow along. This is the preset that I was talking about. Um, I was poking Akram earlier uh, or yesterday about can we get something similar as view add but for presets so we can reduce the amount of um, text that we have to write. But if you have your computer right now, you can go ahead and install this. Uh, because it does create a completely fully scaffolded application, it will take a little bit. So because of that, I already have it installed on my computer so I can kind of quickly go through some of the benefits of it. Again, very basic view layout, same thing that you're normally accustomed to with just a couple small tweaks. If you've used Nuxt, they've got layouts. I love them. But how do you bring that to an SPA? So created a process for making it so that you can have layouts. Um, out of the box, this is going to be, um, and it's probably not there just yet, but it's going to be 100-100 light score. So when you're starting with it, you know that if it goes below that, it, it might be just your fault. Um, but the idea is, again, provide users with a structure that helps them uh, be able to move forward and, and actually develop. Most of our developer, or well, most, but a lot of our developers are back-end, uh, and they don't know anything about design, but they love that they can just put things in there and it works. So giving them more tools to succeed helps in, you know, increase uh, the ecosystem, makes everything better, and it just gives a much better user experience. And just real quick, I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Again, very basic. This is the base one, and again, there will be essential and recommended coming out soon. But it just gets you in the door. Uh, you can start working on an application. It's already set up with everything that, again, we on the team recommend. You can still change it. It still implements the, uh, the modularity of Vue CLI, so you can add and remove packages all you want. Uh, but you have a solid starting base. And... Uh, finishing up, so if anyone's talked with me, you know how passionate I am about what I believe in open source authors' uh, commitment to a community is. Um, I absolutely love giving back, and I really think it's important to acknowledge the, uh, the shoulders of the people that we stand on that allow us to be in this position to help. And this is not an extensive list of everyone that's contributed, but these are definitely some very big people that have made this project as successful as it is. Um, my philosophy is surround yourself with smart people and listen to them. And personally, to me, they're the real heroes, so I want to say you know, a big thank you. And if you guys want, wouldn't mind giving a round of applause uh, for all the help the contributors do. And just like with any open source project, we'll, we have sponsors so that we can continue to have the funds that we need in order to progress the framework further. And a, a big thanks to them for being uh, you know, solid and making sure that uh, we had the uh, financial means to be able to continue forward with the development without compromising anything in between. And if you're interested, you know, we do have information for uh, how you can sponsor us uh, through GitHub Sponsors and Open Collective, and uh, you actually get quite a few benefits, including even being able to talk with the dev team to get help, which is really awesome. And that's pretty much it. You know, thank you. I really appreciate being invited here to talk. It's been an amazing experience. I've got to talk with a lot of people, and uh, it's been so much fun. Again, please join us in our community. Uh, it is an awesome place to get uh, help and advice. You can send me questions, ask me things. I'm always in there talking. And uh, social media is there as well. And uh, yeah, that's my talk. I'm John Leader, and this has been Beautify. Thank you, John, and for all the work that you do on Beautify. This is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much.